did it increase their ability to show sadness in their face? And then taking it a step further, after all of that, are they able to more, are they able to express what sadness really means and what these emotions really mean? Um, so that was kind of a example of how to take it, how to take this and do it objectively. We're going to move on for now. I'm trying to keep track of time. I don't want to run out, but um, uh, we've, I've shown you a little bit about objectives. So now I want to give you a few basic outlines of an intervention I may do in the performance music therapy world. So this first one is performance drumming. So this is learning a drum beat for a performance. Um, so, so for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to say that my domain is performance. And some of my goals with this intervention are to improve self-esteem and to improve emotional um, organizational skills. So my translation of my intervention, this is just something that I do for myself when organizing interventions is what's a step by step? What do I need to make sure that I know I'm doing in this intervention? So in the session, we start by learning a drum beat and we do it to a preferred song. So I'm going to give you a real life example. I have a client, client Z, and we chose the song Keep Your Head Up by Andy Grammer because we're working on building our self-esteem and that song has a really good message about that. So we learned a drum beat to it and he start, the client's starting to practice and he's doing the drum beat with it and to take it a step further, further, we created a rehearsal schedule. So with that, outside of music therapy, I was like, listen, like you have this performance coming up. I think that you need to take the initiative and practice outside of music therapy. So let's find time that you're going to do that. And he set goals for himself to do that every week. So now, now one of his goals is for himself is I'm going to practice 10 minutes outside of music therapy with Jordan. And when I come back, I can tell her how my 10 minute practice went. So through this process and all of these weeks leading up to our performance, I'm continuing to support my client. We take a little bit of time in each session to work on it. And we also talk about the preparation for a performance. So what does it feel like when you're going to perform? Do you feel scared? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel happy? Are you terrified or do you not want to do it? Because all of these kinds of emotions are emotions that we feel in real life. So then you can take, okay, I feel this. I feel very anxious. My heart, my heart rate is beating so fast. When's another time you felt that in your life? And we're taking these moments that in a safe space we're creating and we can generalize, oh, I feel this way every time I have to go to school. Okay, so now we're identifying different ways that people are feeling emotions. Um, so after that, we're leading up to our performance and we get to our performance day and my client performs. And because we're music therapists, we have the musical ability to make them feel successful because it's not about, ooh, my client's gonna go up there and do their drum beat perfect for exactly two minutes and 30 seconds, which is how long our song is. No, it's not about that. It's about them going up there and feeling proud of themselves and doing it. So I'm going to do whatever I can to make them feel successful in that. And after that, that opens this world up for our clients to, how did that feel? How did it feel to get up on stage and to do that? What, what, do you, what are you proud of that you did along the way to get to that performance? And like finding those humanistic things and those experiences they, that they felt. And then as a music therapist, taking that and teaching them how to generalize it. Teaching them, oh, I had this awesome coping skill that I learned. And it was, when I'm anxious, I do a body shakeout. Now, they did that before the performance, and now when they're feeling anxious, they can go to the bathroom at school and do that. So, this was one example. I'm gonna move on for now, because I do wanna make sure that we get to questions, because I see that people are starting to come up with them, which is awesome. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move on. This is another example of an intervention that could be done with a little bit less detail, um, because of time's sake, but, so an intervention could be being in a show. So at a place to be, we facilitate actual shows for our clients to be in. And I'm taking this from an experience I had in my internship when I was part of a touring show. The, um, the cast included clients of a place to be with various levels of ability and various things and challenges going on in their lives. And they taught a message to middle schools all around here about inclusion and empathy. So to teach their message, they told their own stories. 
these people got up on stage and they presented their life. Like, hey, I have anxiety and I'm going to sing a song about it on stage in front of like 700 people. So that in itself is such an empowering thing. So some goals that could be happening during this performance process, during our rehearsals, and during the actual performances is improving our self-esteem. We're increasing our awareness of others. We're increasing our self-expression. And this idea of increasing a sense of belonging. So the, a sense of belonging is, is a heavy word because it's kind of hard to explain. Like, what does that mean? How do we know where someone belongs? How do we track that? And how can we find the best way to know why it's so important for people to feel like they belong? Um, so a little example of this is when I was doing all of my shows, I got to work with like this huge, this huge cast of awesome people. And in between the shows, because we would have two shows a day sometimes, we'd be sitting backstage and, you know, I just, I would get to talk to different clients and one time I asked a client, I was like, so why, why do you want to do these shows? Why are you here every season? Why do you continue to come back and do a show with a place to be? And this client who's 14 years old um, looks at me and they're like, you know, Jordan, I didn't really ever feel like I fit in. And I've had a lot of problems in my life. And I wish when I was in middle school, someone could have gone on stage and told me what I know now. And someone would have, could have gone on stage that's not like picture perfect, like on TV. And they could have said, you know, it's okay to be yourself. And it's okay that you have different challenges because guess what? Everybody has a challenge. This, this person is 14 years old and she said this to me as a, like a young music therapy intern. I'm like, whoa, that's the first time that it really like hit me that this performance, music therapy, it's doing something for them. This client, when they started with a place to be, were they were very shy, very to themselves, and had a really hard time talking and performing and conversing with other people. And now they, they're in almost all of our shows. And they're not only in our shows, but they've taken on this other idea of being a leader and what it means to be a leader and helping others, which is really, really important. And when we're doing music therapy, we're not, we have to think about the fact that we're not just doing music therapy to do music therapy. We're doing music therapy because we want to increase someone else's potential and whatever that means to them. So we want to take their life and make them so they can live it to their fullest potential and do what they want to do with their lives. So I'm going to move on for now um, and leave you with that. Let's talk a little bit more about objectivity because I've said this a few times now and I'm going to say it again. Evidence-based practice is how we can and will continue to grow as a field in music therapy. If we want other health professionals to recognize us, we have to be evidence-based. We can't just, I mean, the story I just told about this 14-year-old client, it's beautiful, and you see all the, these cool leadership skills that they're having, but that's not going to mean anything to a doctor. They're going to be like, okay, cool, that's awesome. We need to show them, no, what we're doing is actually working. So that's why evidence and finding objective evidence is so, so important. So I'm going to give you a few examples now of how you can take objective evidence in this sort of setting and generally in any music therapy setting. So the first kind of measurable data that you can take is the idea of a pre and post test. So this can be done in a few different ways. Maybe you have a pre and post test every session. So you're saying, what's your anxiety level at the beginning of the session? And what's your anxiety level at the end of the session? You can also do it over the, perform the, over the performance time. So at the very first rehearsal, you give your clients a quick survey. Like, how do you feel like you belong in the world? What sh do you know what empathy means? Do you know what it means to belong? Do you have a lot of, do you see yourself as having a lot of friends? Do you see yourself as fitting in? And then doing that exact same test again at the end of this performance process and comparing what the different outcomes are and like how perception might change. Another way that you can take objective data is the idea of frequency. So maybe you are, you're tracking in a session or in a rehearsal or in a performance, how many times someone does something. So an example of this is I have a client who does something called vocal substitutions instead of speaking and, and instead of singing. And so one of their goals through 
a performance, like leading up to a performance, was to take their vocal substitutions and make the frequency from 20 to 10. So they started at their baseline of 20, and by the end of our performance in the performance track, my goal was to have them at 10 vocal substitutions. Um, that's very measurable, and that's something that I can do very, very easily every week. So I'm constantly seeing this number, and I always have data, so I know if what I'm doing is working in the long run. Another thing that you can do is duration. So if you have a duration of something, maybe you're looking at a specific behavior, a really good example of this is communication between clients in a show that's unprompted by a therapist. So maybe at the very beginning of this rehearsal process, nobody's talking to each other. There's like 0 0.0 seconds, someone's like, hey, and there's not a lot of like that social interaction happening, but tracking every week, how many minutes are people socially interacting with each other? And also how many times are people socially interacting with each other and seeing if we can find some correlation there. Um, I think I'm almost out of time. So I am gonna keep going for now, but I love talking about objectivity. And if you wanna reach out to me after this, I can talk to you for hours about how to be objective and find measurable data in your objectives. Because now I wanna talk a little bit about subjectivity. So I wanna take a moment now and I want you to think about yourself, okay? So we're flipping this on us. And I want you to think for the first question, what feelings do you have when you perform? And you can put them in the comment box if you want. Because of time's sake, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I feel so that we can get through all of this. When I perform, I feel a jolt of adrenaline and it's a little scary at first and my hands shake. And sometimes my mouth tingles because I get so excited. But when I start performing, it all stops. And I have this moment when I was on stage and I used to act, I have this moment of like being someone else and every other anxiety that I have goes away. And then when a performance ends, I have this cathartic release that we talk about in music therapy all the time where I feel so good. And it's like all of the endorphins in my body have turned on and I feel happy and I feel accomplished regardless 